cool. That was cool. So uh, Sydney got to do something absolutely incredible. And now that she's all graduated, she can talk about Yay. it. So Sydney, what was it? I wanted to test different filaments and some of the different mechanical properties that go along with making the filaments. And there was no better way than to do it with my dad, who has the connections, um, works with filament all the time. All the time. And, you know, I was really excited for that. Super excited, right? Well, yeah. and, and your teacher loved this yeah. too, right? Yeah, my teacher, uh, shout out Miss Slack. I love her. I'm very sad that I won't have her anymore, but it was a very fun time working and doing this stuff in class, even though it didn't work out the way that we wanted it to. But but we were able to get this done. And, and part of why we're bringing this to you is because it's, it's a lot of just testing and science and procedure and we get to go over things at the end and, mm -hmm. and, and talk about what went well yeah. and what didn't go we had well. We a lot of ups and downs. We did especially. have lots of, lots of ups and downs. So I think there's no better way than to get right into it. Here we go. We are of course in 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. 8% off, link in the description. It's like free money. Free money! Well, there's no better place to test filaments than here, and there's no better place to get filaments than Protopasta. Protopasta. Proto We've known them for a long time. They're actually personal friends of ours, right? Yeah. I've been going there for a long time as a well. A long time. I remember making filament when I was really little. Then I made it all by myself. Woohoo! <laughs> really, really little. Well, then, for this time, you weren't really little. This was for your high school class. Yeah. And what was the first step when we got there? Um, I talked to Alex about different mechanical properties. I think we could make some materials that would behave differently when stepped on. Why don't we, um, why don't we look at some different additive options? We could add things that um, bring more stiffness or lighten the weight or maybe make a material more flexible or, or less likely to break. Oh, okay, that's right. There were additives that yeah. you could add to the filaments in order to increase its impact resistance or to reduce the weight of the filament. Yes. Okay. And those that's were the two we decided on. That was the two. Well, and then there was a third, a control, yes. right? Yes, yes. But there wasn't there, wasn't there an overarching <laughs> property of all of the filaments? Didn't they all have something? Glitter. Yeah, they all had glitter. <laughs> I wanted them all to have glitter and I think that that made it better. Now, when the filament was coming out of the, the rollers and, and, and being spooled up, I know Hudson was spooling it there. And I, I think he ran into a problem with one of them where it was slightly out of spec. Did, did that get resolved? Yes, he snipped it. And that's actually why we came out with four spools instead of three. Hey, Sid, here's your oh, filament. Thank you so much. Why is there four? It was out of spec. Okay. So it might not feed through your extruder. So I cut off the defect and split it into two. And I also made sure to use extra purge between them so your data doesn't get contaminated. Okay, so we left with the same amount of material for each roll, yes. essentially. Yay. Well, that's perfect, I guess. So yeah. then the next step is to bring it back to the, well, now old studio mm -hmm. and get some prints done. Yay! Well, we're back from Protopasta. Alex there is always super nice. Mm -hmm. and it was really cool that he was able to kind of guide you through the process of what you guys were doing and we came up with three different filaments yep. that we were gonna use, right? It was very informative as well. So back at the old studio now, we had to come up with models to print in order to test. Yep. And, and to do that, Sydney had to complete her CAD class for her engineering class, right? Yes. Now, what was something really cool that we found out when we were doing this? My engineering teacher put little YouTube videos and tutorials, and one of the tutorials was one of your friends, I think. Yeah, Michael. He goes by teaching tech. He put out a tutorial on how to make a domino, and the teacher used that as training yeah. for the CAD it class. It was in our slides, and I was like, Dad, I think I'm gonna use this one. And you're like, I know that. Because that was really cool. Awesome! I modeled a two inch cube with a half inch hole down the center of the cube because the machine at school, that was the requirements I needed the hole. Oh, that's right. That uh, The machine uh, had a post that would go up through the hole and a platform at the top that would pull yep. down to try and crush it. Usually and for balsa wood structures, I think. In engineering class, you might build balsa wood bridges. Yeah. And that's to test those. But we weren't testing balsa wood. We were testing materials like PLA, plastic, plastic polymers. So I took the cubes that Sydney made and I made a three by three grid in, within Bamboo Studio on the build plates because we were gonna be printing them on the X1 carbons. I did some slicer configurations because I needed each one to have slightly different slicing settings. So each column was an infill type. And so if we go left to right, this column was going to be cubic, this column was gonna be gyroid, and this column was going to be 3D honeycomb. Obviously, I the like, tastiest, right? Because yeah. it's a honeycomb. So across the rows now, the rows, we have different infill percentages. So right across the top, 5%. 
in the middle 10% and along the lower row 15%. Once they were all printed out, Sydney got the job of labeling yes, the cubes. Yes, I did. Then we went about weighing these, and um, I remember when we weighed them, we used my shipping scale. The control weighed 300 grams mm -hmm. of material exactly for the nine cubes, and then for the weight reduction, it was 250 grams. Remember that? Yeah. And then we were like, impact resistance. Oh, it's 250 yeah, grams we as well. Yeah, we were really confused about Super that. Super confused. Any guesses for what it's gonna weigh? I'm gonna say 310. Okay. 310. 314. 250 grams. <laughs> I think I know what happened. The shipping scale itself, mm -hmm. I think, doesn't have as high of a resolution of weight, meaning it goes in 25 gram increments. I don't think it can measure down to the gram. And so we have, uh, we have a, a general number here, yep. but I, but I think I think in the future, if we were to do this again, we would get a better scale. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Next, we took the cubes to the school to test them. We also had testing problems. Yeah. Unfortunately. Now we're in the engineering room and behind us we have what? The Structural Stress Analyzer 1000. The Structural Stress Analyzer 1000. Mm. Its goal in life is to crush things. And each of these cubes are gonna go through a series of tests where it just pulls down and attempts to crush it. So we put the cubes in the machine and it can measure crushing forces up to a thousand pounds, which seems good. It does, but it's usually used for balsa wood bridges, toothpick bridges, and other things along those lines, not plastic cubes. So it's not powerful enough, is it? No. Do it, do it. Ooh, I see it moving. Maximum four succeeded. It tried and then it hit a thousand pounds really quick and it just gave up. Yeah, and there was nothing. You no, couldn't really see anything. No matter what we did, it wasn't going to be able to fully test what we were doing. The crushing of the cube, you know, the little bit that it moved, yeah. it caused a little bit of what we call deflection but not enough to yeah, actually actually test sense. anything. And so we were kind of at a standstill. Mm. So what I did is I reached out to John, our friend over at Engitype, and he put me in contact with Mark, who works at Microsoft, which let us go where? The Building 87 APC Engineering ME Lab. That's right, the ME Lab. That was cool going in there. That was really cool. That I was really, really enjoyed cool. that. We worked with Dan in the ME lab and Dan was a saint. So we are going to be looking at a universal test machine. Mm -hmm. This is one of the cornerstones of the engineering team and the data collection to produce the uh, highest quality products we can. And what Dan did was set us up on the universal test machine. It could crush with so much more force. Plus, when it's actually crushing things, it can give us the numbers on how hard it's crushing and the displacement, meaning yes. how much squish there is before the hopefully explosion <laughs> happens. We got all the details. And then Dan set us up with a high speed camera and he, he gave you the what is, you got to control the pickle? The pickle. You're gonna have the important job yes. of hitting the button, the pickle as they call it, um, at about three and a half seconds in. So it's a little bit about timing. When we talk about high speed video, we have a limited window of which this will actually take images. So as the universal test machine was crushing the cubes, you had that five second or three second window for yeah. when the pickle could be activated. And once the pickle was activated, you then shot for two seconds, yeah. or three seconds, whatever and it was. And we didn't know if we got it until we looked back at the footage. <laughs> Once the high-speed camera was set up and Sid was properly pickle trained and Dan was making sure we were observing all safety rules, <laughs> we started Glasses. crushing the cubes and it was glorious. It was so much fun. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start your test. All right, we're about to start the first test. Three, two, one. Here we go. There was lots of destruction and, and usually Dan will put up some sort of blast shield to keep things from getting out. We only yeah. did a couple of them, but you know, it was actually time for you to get back to class, <laughs> yeah. right? So what did Dan do for he us? He tested the rest for us, which is amazing. Thank you, Dan. Dan, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give him a heart. Love you, Dan. Love you, Dan. You complete me. And now what you've all been waiting for, the results.
What Sydney just dumped on the table are all of the cubes that got crushed. And you can see they're in, they're in various states of being just crushed. You can still see all the labels. <laughs> you can still see the labels, but some of these are just missing plastic. Some of these are squished where they're like folding and bending. Some of these are, are missing shards, like they exploded. I think that was really interesting. So along with this, Dan delivered an Emmy test report to mm -hmm. us. So all of the numbers for all of this, what's really great about the universal test machine, and I didn't tell you about this yet. So as it is pushing down, mm -hmm. it's giving us a running tally of how long it's been, how far it's pushing down, and how hard it's pushing down. Ooh. So now we talk about these numbers, we've got one, we've got two, and we got three. So one is what? Impact resistance. The impact resistance cube, that's right. And two is? Weight reduction. Weight reduction, okay, which makes number three. Control. But they all have what? Glitter. Yeah, they all have glitter. Okay, so uh, we get numbers like this. One is the impact resistance, and with 5% gyroid, it had one and a half millimeters of compression, and that it withstood a maximum load of 1,922 pounds, whereas 5% of cubic infill with the impact modification, had 1.6 millimeters of compression and withstood 1,800 pounds. And so there are differences here and I'm gonna put them on the screen because I, I, I can talk about some of, the, some of the stuff here, but I want you to look at the numbers yourself just to be able to see the craziness that was going on. There were some that really kind of surprised me though. And so if we look at number three, the control, mm -hmm. three, Cubic, 15%. Oh, so it had a 4.67 millimeter compressive extension. And that means it the cube squished 4.67. And it was stood at maximum 2,804 pounds. And the reason I bring that up is because if we take the control, cubic 10% infill, now, it doesn't compress nearly as much, about half as much, 2.14 millimeters, but its maximum load was nearly 4,600 pounds. Yeah, that was insane. Whoa. So if we look at it, then 3C15 did more of a fold in, whereas 3C10 did more of an explosion. Yeah. Okay, and then three, two, one, go. Let's see what we got. Fine, there it is. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> so these, these two here were our winners because we had 3H15. So control, 3D honeycomb, 15% infill, a 2.37 millimeter compressive deflection, and 5,416 pounds of force. That's more than two tons, <laughs> two tons. But again, that wasn't the craziest one. It was gyroid, the tastiest infill, the tastiest infill, when printed in chocolate. Um, control, gyroid, 15% infill, two and a half millimeter compressive extension at maximum. This one, this cube right here withstood 5,537 pounds. That's, in, that's insane. The winner, obviously. We get to do all sorts of really fun testing like that, and we get to give the results to your teacher. Yeah. And that was all stuff that was done in school. So, yeah. so we, we, we did that. So now I want to I wanna have a, a small little, what we call a post-mortem. Mm -hmm. And so during this whole process, what went well? I think crushing the cubes and watching in slow motion how things actually compress and break apart was really interesting because I've never seen it with something especially that i've created that yeah. was super cool getting to know people and like talking to people about things like this and who work in industries like you it was really cool what do you think we could improve and we kind of talked about it during the process so trying to find the machines that can measure properly 100 percent. i think we could have looked into how much plastic can like withstand <laughs> a little bit before we did it at the end of the day what the science showed was that for our test, mm -hmm. the compression test, the standalone control performed better than the 
the, then the material that had the impact resistance modification yeah. and the material that had the weight reduction. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's interesting that PLA material just by itself without adding certain things it's for a compression test. It's strong. Super strong. Crazy who, strong. Who would have thunk it? This is huge. I mean, maybe, maybe others would have, maybe we should have done our research, <laughs> but it was still fun. Science was done at the end of the day and you did graduate. So, yeah. I mean, legit. Well, listen, this was a bunch of fun. Like I said, I'll put the data out there so you can take a look at it as well. I had a great time. Did I you had have so a, much fun. You had a fun? I had, had so you, much fun. You had a fun? I had a lot of fun. You had a fun. I had oh, a fun. Good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on this journey. If yeah. you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and uh, print all the things. Yeah. Yeah, print all the things. All right. And as always, high five. High five. You want one? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh.